In the video on the Windows desktop, I recommended that you work most of the time in window mode rather than in full screen mode. And somebody that watched that said, well, how do I do that? So I guess I need to show a little bit about working with Windows. The problem that we have is that most people, if they've been using computers for quite a while, started out working on a screen that didn't have the same resolution screens have now and weren't nearly as large. So they needed all of the real estate on the screen to work on whatever they were doing. Now our monitors are really quite wide. Most of them are a full 1080p which means that they're 1920 pixels wide and when you're running something full screen and it takes up that whole space we see something like this here's the imaging tips website and as you see there's lots of room on either side you don't need that and so what you want to do is instead of running your browser full screen you want to run in windows mode and you do that by clicking here the icon that has a couple little windows in it right next to the X you click on that and now it's a window and if you grab up here you can move the window around and if you put your cursor on either side or corner you can change the shape of the window so here I'm gonna put my cursor here I'm going to left click and drag and see how it changes the width. So I recommend you do this with your browser using some website that you use a lot. For example, Facebook or your email program or whatever. And size it so that that website works quite nicely in that width window. And then the other thing for a browser I recommend is that you take the bottom of the window and move it all the way off the bottom and watch what happens when we do that if I grab it left click come down go off the bottom notice how it also jumped to the top at the same time so that means we have all of the vertical space of the screen available which minimizes the amount of scrolling we need to do but we still have room on the sides to do other things and see other things that are running and we can get to them with a single click now the thing that really frustrates me is when I see somebody with a window like this with they're looking at their Windows Explorer and it's taken up the whole screen and we clearly don't need that so Windows Explorer's window I like to have much smaller and so if we restore this one down and if we resize it to a size that makes sense to us for whatever typically we're doing, that's the size window that I like for Windows Explorer normally. And I click the, off the edge and this popped on top of it. I'll minimize it temporarily. So the secret always is to stop closing windows. Leave all the windows open that you might be working on. Unless you're totally through with that project, don't close it. We look down here at the taskbar, and you remember I had the taskbar disappear. If we look here at the taskbar, if we run our cursor over any of these individual icons, we see how many windows there are. You see there are six versions of Windows Explorer running at the moment, and we see little live icons of what's visible on them. Some of them just show folders. and that's unusual it's because I had the machine shut off while I was still open and so it forgot what was currently being displayed anyway if we look carefully here at the bottom for some reason on this computer it's not showing them but normally you would see shadows around the programs that were active on the taskbar there'd be shadows around them. Here we see just little lines underneath them. And sometimes the shadows show 
Um, instead of a single shadow, you see two or three shadows, and that indicates that multiple copies of that program is running. Here, as I move over them and pause for a second, it pops up and shows me what they're what the windows have currently displayed in them. Anyway, uh, that's how you know what's running. And you cursor over them, you can sort of see the contents of what it is. Now, why is this all so interesting and useful? Let's look at a couple of normal scenarios. Um, after we've resized the window, the reason we're doing this is that we want to do things that involve data that's being displayed in more than one window. For example, let's say I'm writing an email. I go to my email program. I use Gmail. I'm going to compose a new email. And, you know, I'd put in who I was sending it to and subject and start putting some text. But if I wanted to add an attachment, for example, if I wanted to attach a picture to this email, instead of going down to the attach button and having to go search for it, if you're already working with that folder in some other window, and here I've got Faststone, let's say I wanted to send this picture to someone. If I take and move this window over to the side so I can see the picture, and now if I drag it onto my email and drop it here, notice how it's being added as an attachment to the email. And most of the email programs let you drag and drop into them like this. Now, in this case, it's an attachment. The way Gmail works is that if you are sending it in plain text mode, it will send attachments. But if you're in rich text mode, it will put the pictures in line. So I'm going to delete this attachment. I'm going to change the mode from plain text to rich text. Now it says rich text here. And whatever mode you pick in Gmail, it's going to remember that the next time you send emails. It figures that you like to use that mode. Personally, I like plain text, but that's just me. So if I now drag and drop this picture in here, notice now it's putting it in line. And I can write above and below the picture. Let's go to bigger screen. Let's uh, put some text in above it. You know, because this is now rich text, I can change the size of the text and all that other stuff. And I can make the picture bigger. Okay? So, that's one of the reasons that you want to do it. Another useful thing is that if you're trying to organize things and move things from one folder to another, you want to work with the folders both open so you can see what's in both and know where you're moving it to and so on. So let's minimize these. Let's uh, take Fast Stone and minimize that. Let's go look at a folder. Let's say that we wanted to go put something on my external hard drive that's connected here. If I take and drag this window to the side now watch what happens here. I'm going to drag it to the side and when the cursor at the top where I'm holding the window hits the edge, watch what happens. That We now have something where the background changes color. Do you see how it changed color right in the middle of the screen? That says it's going to resize this window to half the screen. And if I moved it to a corner instead of the side. Now it will, maybe you can't see that, but it's moving, it's going to resize it to a quarter of the screen. I'll move it down to the bottom here. See there where it's going to the bottom corner? So I could put four windows or two windows over here and one window over here and I could see everything in that window on the screen at once. And now 
the size of the window has changed and the scroll bars you know work with this new size window but that's especially useful when I'm trying to move some things like if I went to my documents folder here and wanted to move uh, my folder here called cruises over here to whoops click to so I'm going to do that I'm going to left click and drag and here it says I'm going to copy that whole folder to the external hard drive so it's very nice to be able to see the contents of both folders at the same time when I let go it's going to move it there I won't actually do that so I'll drop it back here whoops I dropped it into the office lens folder which I probably didn't want to do so I'll move it back out and I can grab it and I'll just move it back on top of the documents folder I could do it over on the left as well now when we go back here cruises is back where it goes anyway now I have these windows so that they're sort of sitting a little over the top of each other if I did what I had said before if I move this one over to the side it takes up half the screen yeah. oh notice what happened there when I moved it over there gave me these choices. What do I want to put here? Well, I could pick one of these other windows and put it up in the remaining space. So that's a neat feature as well. Anyway, if I want to get out of this, if I just click once, this is going to go to full screen. If I click restore down again, it goes back to the size it was before I started messing around and putting them into quarters or halves or whatever. So, anyway, that's uh, that feature. Now, on my own machine, my desktop machine, I actually have three monitors attached to it. Not oh, by the way, notice what happened there. I was over here, was taking up a quarter, I didn't have anything over, running over there. If I grab this and pull it away from the edge, it went back to the original size. So that's the other choice. I don't have to restore to full screen. I can just go back to the normal size by pulling it off of the edge of the monitor. Now let's look at what I do on my own computer. I have three separate monitors attached to that computer, and they're all high-res monitors. They're 1920 by 1200. I like the ones that are a little higher than the 1080. Uh, they're a little bit more expensive, but they give me more vertical space, which is important to me. So typically, this is my center screen. This is where I do the majority of my work. That's right in front of you. That's what you want to see. On the left-hand screen, I will have something else open. It might be my calendar or whatever. I always have, uh, for example, my Chrome browser open over there because that browser I open with several tabs and you know those tabs include my email and my calendar, etc. So that's one thing. Here, if I'm working with Photoshop, sometimes I want to learn something about how to do some new thing and I'm typically going to be watching a video. So here's a video running on the left screen and I'm doing something with Photoshop. I'm able to practice what it's showing me. And notice that Photoshop is not only on this screen but all of its uh, palettes are over here on the right hand screen uh, which gives me a lot more room on the center screen. And even if you don't have a desktop with multiple monitors if you use a laptop computer, I really recommend attaching a monitor to that laptop computer and then set your laptop next to it, typically on the right if you like it there, and put other windows over on the right. And on the right, you have things that, you know, sort of are running active. You might want to see what the progress is. You can have all kinds of things running there. So. You're primarily working here. Your eye can jump to either side and see other things that are active on your computer and working. So 
another advantage of working with Windows. A couple other thoughts to share. First, if you're working on multiple monitors like I am, you can take any window, for example, here's one, and just grab it at the top like you would any window and slide it to the right or the left to move it to the other monitor. And unlike here where it's a single monitor, where as I hit the edge, it pops into a different shape, I can just move it anywhere and it's one continuous desktop. So it's incredibly easy to work with multiple monitors. The other point that I wanted to make was that depending on what you're working on, for example, if you're using a spreadsheet program like Excel, you might want to work in that full screen. And that makes a lot of sense because we can see everything, or we can certainly see more columns because we have a lot more room. But even in this case, where you often want to be working with two different windows, the thing I would recommend is that you go into Windows mode like this and then reshape the window to better fit what you're doing. Excel, I like to normally run in a window that is very wide, as wide as my desktop, and I'll actually even extend it over two desktops, so it's incredibly wide, and I can see what's on all the columns. But you make it as wide as you want, you make it appropriately tall, and that lets you run something else behind it and copy and paste things from another window, whatever you might want to do. So don't think that the windows need to be any particular shape. Make them the appropriate shape for the application.